So some new ideas in space travel. Ion propulsion is a new idea. Rather than those big, bulky rockets that produce all the fire out of the back, ion propulsion is where you push charged particles out the back. Uh, it's, a, it's a good method because it doesn't require all the fuel, but it doesn't work for launching. It would be hard to do from, to launch things quickly from the Earth, but once things are at high altitude, or if you can take them up slowly, ion propulsion is a good idea. So that's going forward. Space sails is an interesting idea for the future. The idea is that the sun produces light and also sends out particles, and that can push on a big sail like this. Because in space, there's no air, so there's nothing to push back. And so you just unfurl your sail and let the sun push you, and it will make you speed up. So you, you avoid all the rockets. This has not been implemented yet, but there's no reason it wouldn't work. So this probably is on the horizon. This is from President Obama gave a speech in 2010 talking about where he wants the space program to go. The idea is that we're going to be sending humans to asteroids over the next couple of decades out to look at asteroids, uh, probably land on asteroids. We may be landing back on the moon again in the, in the near future. The previous plan was to build an actual moon base, but we'll probably land on the moon again. We'll land on asteroids. We're going to send humans to orbit Mars hopefully by the, by the mid-2030s, that's the goal. And then shortly after that, talk about a moon landing, actually, I'm sorry, a Mars landing, actually putting humans on Mars. So other things, NASA has a plan to go out and grab an asteroid and bring it back to orbit nearby the Earth so we can study asteroids in more detail. There's another group, it's not NASA, but it's a private group that is talking about making a one-way trip to Mars where they're gathering, they've gathered a bunch of volunteers and they're in the process to take people to Mars and leave them there, where they're going to live the rest of their lives there. Like I mentioned, privatization. NASA, when we first did the moon landing, it was pushed by this government agency called the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. The role of NASA is declining and the role of private companies is increasing in space travel. There are a bunch of companies that want to offer for a few thousand bucks, you can go to space. That's what they want to do. It, they would like it to get to the point where it's like an airplane ticket, where you just go, on, go online and you buy your, your, your space ticket. The, we have to get the cost down and figure some things out, but there's a bunch of companies that want to do that. And if you are interested in that, there's a bunch of places you could work to try to help make that happen. And increase in presence beyond America and Russia. Like I mentioned, the Chinese government has a space station. The Chinese government is, is plan, planning a moon landing. They also have planned going to Mars. There are, uh, India has been sending up spacecraft. So there have been an increase beyond just America and Russia that were involved in the space race in the 60s. A lot of other countries have gotten involved in space. And also there's a lot of international cooperation in this, which is kind of different from the 60s. Okay, so that's what I had. Did anybody have any questions? For all the, for all the countries to do that right now is probably not going to happen. There are still significant political tensions. That's not going to happen at the moment. But that's, that is the goal, is to increase the international cooperation. That was one of the ideas behind the International Space Station, was to get everybody to do it together rather than... In the 60s, of course, the model was us versus the Soviet Union, we have, for our own survival, we have to beat them at everything. And it pushed us really fast, we got to the moon, but we kind of want to move beyond that into international cooperation. We're closer, but we're not quite to the point where everybody will work together effectively right now. They have successfully made it significantly cheaper. There's another one called Virgin Galactic. I think it's Richard Branson owns that one. He owns an airline also. So, as with any new enterprise, the struggle is to get it, to get the infrastructure there so it is cheap. You may have heard a few years ago that you could ride on the Russian spacecraft for $20 million. You could ride up into orbit on the, the, the Soyuz. And some people did that, but very few of us have $20 million to do that. So if at least could be $10,000, it could be a dream thing you do in the future, but maybe 20, 30 years in the future, it'll be a couple hundred bucks. Maybe. That's, that's the idea, is can they get that to happen? And then that, that opens up a whole new thing. Are we going to be traveling to the moon 
landing on the moon? Is it going to be a moon base where you sign up and take the three-day trip to the moon? That's a little ways away, probably a couple decades. But if it's people are interested, there are people who are trying to develop that. There's also states are trying to open spaceports. There are states that are trying to get on this early and open up spaceports in case space travel really does take off. They want to have spaceports open to get people, come put your spaceport over here. So we'll see how it goes. I think it's going to grow. We'll have to see how quickly it goes.